Welcome, David Weaver. David, you are a coach, uh, coach to the stars. You work with a lot of great business leaders. Uh, you are, in your words, a human optimization coach. David, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Josh. Yeah, so go ahead and describe your work and who you work with, what you do, and and uh, let's 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 meander and and find out how we can bring some value to our listeners here. Yeah, so um, I work with business owners to help them create a, both a personal life and a business that they love. You know, I found so many times we get into business and we go down this road. We we're, we're really passionate about this thing that we're creating, um, and then we find ourselves maybe in this place where we're not actually really that happy with how our life has turned out because we're so caught up in the thick of everything. And so I love helping people slow down, take a look at what's most important, and then kind of rebuild that to to have it be something that you know they actually really love, both aspects. Well, but wait a minute. Um, what about you know back in the day? I said, uh, "Well, I'll be happy when I'm making more money." <laughs> what yes. what have you found in that context? Yes, thank you. That's actually one of my favorite favorite things um, to talk about, which is this idea of creating for fulfillment or creating from fulfillment, mm. right? And so you can see you can see the difference there. And like, if I'm creating for fulfillment, then I there, the bar is always moving. Like you just said, oh, well, if I just make this much money, then mm. I'll be happy. If I just can do this, then I'll be happy. Um, and so kind of digging back down and into the root and seeing like, well, what, you know, what's really going on underneath here? That's, that's making us chase at this thing because we actually have the power to choose right now to create from fulfillment. Yeah. You know, one thing I know that you, in terms of people coming in, um, you're just kind of looking at some of the work that you've done. Um, So uh, to our, our listener here, if you find yourself stressed out, overwhelmed, burnout, well, that's pretty much, that's, uh, well, maybe I'm projecting a little bit, but <laughs> I think that's a lot of people. Uh, what, is that your observation as well? I mean, yeah, we all get that way, right? And so, um, and that's okay. I don't want to, I don't want to say that's a bad thing, but but what's, what's right. your whole take on, you know, getting stressed out and burned out and that sort of thing? Yeah. So, I mean, I think as like human beings, we're really good. And, and you guys have probably all heard this before, but like, you know, we're really good at run away from the tiger, the acute danger, and then deal with that stressor and then kind of reset and go back to life. But when we have that like tiger, tiger, tiger constantly, you know, day after day after day, uh, that can cause a lot of problems and like, you know, can manifest in all sorts of health issues. And, and yeah. so really, I do believe that we have the power to, to transform those things. And something that I think is a worthy thing to strive towards is to become as untriggerable as possible. Wow. So in other words, hey, Tiger, <laughs> that's yeah. what we want to get to. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, I think like one of my favorite exercises is just to like write down everything, you know, that triggered you this week. Um, and then, you know, maybe, maybe you can't do it so well in the moment, but you can go back and look at like, just with curiosity, instead of like judgment and like, oh, inter- interesting. Why? Actually, why did I get so upset about that thing and begin to be a little bit more reflective? Um, and then that's like the first kind of step in towards being able to transmute those triggers that are that are coming at us. For sure. I think any time that we can kind of go third party on ourselves and kind of become the scientist and, and you know, even doing that, um, I, I know, like with your brain and treating your brain as, hey, brain, why are you getting so worried about that thing? That's interesting that you're that my brain is responding in that way. Right. So we start to build this distance so that we are not the experience that we're having, that I'm actually kind of becoming, you know, this observer of what's going on and how I'm responding. That alone is like so uh, helpful uh, to not identify with the trauma that you're experiencing. Right. And one, one of the ways that we can talk to ourselves differently is instead of saying, I am triggered, I am anxious, is to say, I am feeling triggered. Yeah. I am feeling anxiety, right? So we're not self-identified as now, like I am an anxious person. No, we're like, mm. I'm feeling anxious about this thing. It's a totally different place to come from. 
Yeah, you know, I, I don't forget what book it was. I was or something I was listening to a podcast or something, but they were talking, you know, again, and I've heard this many, many times, but, you know, be very, very, very thoughtful about anytime you utter the words, I am, <laughs> you know, because it's like, whatever you say after that uh, is, you know, you're manifesting, you know, without even getting too woo woo. It, it's, it really, it's ownership, it's identity. And listen that, so there's, yeah, so there's, kind of like there's the lead chains, but then there's also the gold chains. So you wanna be careful even about the I am and the statement that you might say, I am a dad, I am a mom, because there may be a time then when you know, you're an empty nester. And if your identity is wrapped into, I am that, and for whatever reason, you know, that changes a little bit. Uh, it could be very unsettling. Um, so there are good, so I like, I like that concept of like, you know, the lead chains, but also gold chains, be mindful. And I, so I like, you know, maybe not using any labels, but that I am having an experience. I am experiencing this. I am feeling this, but that's not who I am. I, you know, I, I don't know. And then, so it's like, now yeah. it's like, I am nobody. I don't know. I'm just kind of just this thing experiencing all these things. <laughs> yeah. I'm Josh. I'm David. Yeah. And that's, and that's enough and that's okay. And I do all these things and I'm involved in all these experiences. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. I think it's very easy to, to get caught up in, in one of those things. And yeah. What happens when it goes away? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. One thing I know that you work with folks who find themselves feeling like they're constantly in response mode. That's really easy to do. So we stop being the creator and we're just constantly putting out fires. How can we shift that out of that and doing that quite so much? Yeah. One of my favorite exercises that I love to give people is to, to basically take planning and flip it completely upside down. So and, and a lot of times we have weird feelings about planning too. We're like, oh, planning feels like work and it feels like I'm putting myself into all these little boxes. But I actually think that planning is one of the ways that we can create a lot of freedom in our lives. Um, and so, but typically how do we do it, right? We're like, okay, well, I've got work from here to here. And then I've got, I'm gonna take the kid here for this. And then I've got this thing over here, right? But I challenge everyone that I work with to flip that completely upside down and sit, take a look at the whole month and say, what are the things that if you do these things, it makes you happy, makes you a better person, makes you fulfilled. And we put those on the calendar for the month first. So for mm -hmm. example, for me, like I love the outdoors. I love climbing mountains. I love being out there. So I know for me, I got to spend at least like two days a month where I'm like out, out there for most of the day. And if I do that, I'm such a better dad. I'm such a better husband. I'm such a better co coach, you know, all these things. And then from there, like finding those things and then putting in the, the daily and weekly stuff, like making sure you're sleeping well, eating well, working out, like playing those first instead of just like, oh, if I get done with working time, maybe I'll go like ride my bike or go to the gym or whatever. Um, and because that way you're saying like, I care enough about myself to choose what I would love to have first and putting that yeah. in there and being diligent about that planning so that you're not just reacting and letting things happen automatically. Yeah. Um, I, I um, in terms of like our work day or the work activity, right? And, and I think that, you know, a lot of times without structure and, you know, systems to help with this, I feel like we can, especially talking to business owners, um, we can kind of get sucked into things that, you know, yes, can you solve it? Are you probably going to solve it faster than someone on your team? Yeah, probably, <laughs> you know, um, or, you know, maybe in that case. Um, but if we don't start to, you know, delegate more intelligently, you're, you're just, you're in the hamster wheel. And, and, you know, then you're kind of stuck in that E, you know, kind of the, you know, the old school Kiyosaki cash flow quadrant, you're in the E quadrant, you're just, you're just a technician, you're doing the same things, you got to break out of that cycle, and, and empowering others and delegating to others. And yeah, you, you might take a short term hit. Yes, you might be, it, you know, this is a trap that I think we constantly have to evaluate, okay, what did I do today? Did I have to do that? Is it possible that I can, you know, that I can document this process so that someone can start to get good at this and then eventually just trust that they will become competent at that thing? 
I don't know, if, David, if you do much work in around the kind of the delegation thing or when people are just stressed out, you know, I'm sure you hear this a lot, like, oh, I have to do so much. I'm so busy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get for, tactically freeing themselves up. Yeah. Yeah. Tactically for sure. And then going back to like, um, you know, what you're doing versus who you're being. So if you're feeling like uh, overwhelmed and like this all the time, well, like that's a choice that you're you're making. And so taking ownership of that, which is kind of a hard pill to swallow sometimes like, oh, okay, I'm cre- how am I creating this? And then what would I love to create instead? And so I think that's a po- really powerful question. If we can ask that question, what would I actually love to create? And what are the things that I don't like to do? And then, I mean, cause all of your audience, you know, is they're making at least six figures. So there's no reason why you can't, you can't delegate some of those things that are time consuming and that you don't enjoy like it's very you can you can create life in a totally different way if you choose to yeah yeah and and listen i don't want to i don't want someone to feel like we're being too dismissive the way that we're talking about this but oh, yeah. <laughs> when it comes down to it, it it you know you're you're the owner i mean you're charged with growing the company and um you know you're gonna have to make some you know, some choice, you know, some choices and, 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 you know, these choices are going to revolve around delegation because we have to create, um, I mean, ultimately, David, I, I think you'd agree, right. It's like, if you're in charge, you're the owner of the company, there's going to be some things that you're doing that you probably hate. And you, you got to find a way. To, I, I don't know. It's like, I, I'm of the opinion, you, you got to stop doing that stuff. Cause that, that's the stuff that's going to, you know, you're just going to hate going to work every day. And I, and, and as a business owner, you cannot, I don't want you going to a job. If it's your business that you hate every day, you got, you know, insanity, this is insanity. If you're not making changes to stop that. And, and, yeah. and, and I know that this sounds like common sense, what we're talking about. And I bet everybody's not there and like, well, yeah, duh. I know. Well, yeah, duh. But you know, yet we still can make these mistakes may not be a big pattern, but certainly there's always, always, always room to improve your own lifestyle. If you, this is your baby. So, um, you know, let's design this in a way where you love coming to work every day. If you decide to come to work every day or maybe not. (laughs) Right. Right. And yeah, one of my favorite things, uh, sayings is, uh, we get to create how we relate to everything. So those things that you hate and you don't want to do at work, you still get to choose how you relate to that. So if you know like, ah, this is not my favorite part of running the business, but it needs to be done. You can decide to like connect it to, okay, well, why is this important? Ah, because it helps me do this. Okay, well, why is that important? Ah, because it allows this and this. And if you can connect it to that and sort of change how you're seeing it as like, this is a vehicle to create what I really love. And then also planning to delegate it down the road as you can. Yeah. I think that's a, a much more powerful place to come from because you're not being a victim to the thing. Yeah. You know, one thing I'm thinking, David, as we're talking about is, you know, this idea too of like, what are the things that, that they they just trigger you, right? They, 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 they you know, um, you know, maybe it's like you, you see like a spelling error in your social media or something like that. And, and it really bugs you, right? It, and um, th- at some level, there, there might be some give or grace that you can have so that it doesn't. But on the other hand, listen, if this really is a stressor or, you know, dealing with customer complaints or employee issues or something like that. Okay. I, I, I like, I, you know, what are the things that trigger me? What are the things that just stress me out and use that as a cue for that's an area of business that I probably should get shored up to either a insulate me from something that I really don't need to see that, right? I don't need to be involved in that small problem because it, and, and also it does bug me <laughs> or, or B, yeah. uh, you know, uh, just shore it up and fix it and, and add another layer of control and support in there so that it just, it, it doesn't become a problem. It's listen, g- g- give the person who's involved in that a bit of grace, but give yourself grace. It's okay to, to have a high standard for yourself as long as, right. I, I, I guess, I, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think, um, I think it is, I think we're also really hard on ourselves. So it's, yes. it's like this kind of, kind of finding this place of like, 
holding yourself to these standards, but also like being for, forgiving of yourself, you know, especially when, when they're little things that just really don't matter. They're not that big of a deal. And, you know, we're like freaking out about them. Um, so I think that that's constantly something that we're, that we're always like evaluating and, and looking at is like forgiving ourselves and holding ourselves to high standards to keep growing. Yeah. Listen, and, and I don't know, you know, what, what, you know, where your background was, what my background is, you know, our listeners background. Um, maybe you had a system that set some high standards for you. I definitely did. You know, I had that military background um, and um, you know, it'll stress you out because there's no room for error. <laughs> you can't, you just can't afford that. That's one thing that they, you know, they'll beat into you is that there is no, you know, there, there is no giving up. There is no failure in the mission. You accomplish the mission. There's that, you know, my dad certainly was, you know, pretty, you know, set a high standard for himself. And of course, you know, for us kids too, and, you know, grew up in a, you know, it was also part of a church that would have very, very high, very workspace, very high standards too. Um, listen to my, if, if you've identified with our listener, if you've identified with anything that I'm talking about, or we're talking about, um, do this exercise, like just lay down, close your eyes and just forgive yourself, like, and say, you know what, it's, it's okay. Uh, you know, given your background, like, I, I, I love this, David, that you're bringing this up, right, about this, you know, this grace for yourself and forgiveness for yourself, because, man, chances are anybody on the outside looking at what you and I or our listener does on a day-to-day -day basis, they would probably be pretty damn impressed. Um, and and as, as entrepreneurs, um, it's, it's amazing what business owners and entrepreneurs create on a daily basis and business leaders create on a daily basis. Pretty freaking remarkable. Yeah. Y'all are doing like amazing things in the world. <laughs> and I would just say like one of the things, the small distinctions that I think is important is forgiving yourself for judging yourself because that's a, that's a little bit different and it creates this separation. Like we don't even realize that we're judging ourselves so harshly sometimes and that maybe it is coming from you know like stuff you talked about like military and parents and all these outside influences um that's one of my favorite things that i i love doing with people is like going through that looking at what our our beliefs are that are constraining us and then doing that forgiveness work is a lot of yeah fun. yeah david weaver um who would make a really great intro for you like who who would you love like what kind of people do you love working with I love working with overwhelmed, stressed out business owners. <laughs> well, I know a few of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your website, favorite. yeah, your website, I, I, I apologize if I didn't give this out earlier. It's davidweavercoach.com. When somebody goes there, like, what would you recommend? They're like, okay, well, it's great, it's fun. I, I like this David guy. Like, wh where would be a great place for them to start engaging? Yeah. So um, if you're listening to this podcast today, just scroll down to the bottom and shoot me a message and just put in there thoughtful. So I know you heard on this podcast and um, I would be happy to, to, to chat with you. We can talk further for any of your listeners. I'm happy to, to jump on a call and just help you get some clarity. Um, and then I also have a, a workbook that I created that's for like helping you discover what makes you feel alive and like working through your vision. And cause I kept running into people who are like doing this thing in the business, which is awesome. And I love like, keep doing that, but also like, what makes you feel alive? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, we should figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you want to copy of that workbook, I'd be happy to send that workbook to you as well. Um, That's great. A grant. Yeah. And so again, David Weaver coach and what, and what did they click on? Just scroll to the bottom to the contact. Oh, yeah, there it is, and in, in the message box. Sure, throw in thoughtful. We'll we'll let them know that uh, you're you're a fan. So, David Weaver, thank you so yeah. much. I I really appreciate this conversation. Um, man, this is I I, I love doing what I'm doing because I get to I'm I thank you for the free therapy. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome anytime. All right, again, David yeah, thank Weaver. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. You're found on the web at davidweavercoach.com. Thanks, David. Thank you.